another episode of Bespoke Architects Daily Pinup. I'm Nicole Walters, Director of Bespoke Architects, and I'm about to show you what inspiring des architectural design images made our Pinterest boards today. If you're interested in seeing in detail what it is that I've pinned, please check us out. We are Bespoke Architects on Pinterest. To start with, the McNamara House. Now this was interesting detailing. It's an extension on an existing dwelling and I was really enjoying the interplay of materials and little design quirks like this little ledge on the splashback in this kitchen and then so that's a, a Caesar stone or a marble bench top and then we go into the little mosaic uh, tile here. You'll see the mosaic tile is reused again in the bathrooms where they've added a terrazzo tile. I pinned this image because the joinery runs through into the shower. It's not a detail I've ever used or seen before. I did wonder if that's where you keep your product. And obviously down at the back there, we can see the uh, shower grate drain and the half height wall that acts as a shelf, which is my preferred uh, design detail over a niche. Uh, and again, it's repeated in the bathroom, although I would argue a little bit too high for the user of that particular bathtub. Uh, but I do like that combination of material. I do like the style of the bath, so that's why it made the board. I also included the way that they've cut a hole in this existing brick wall and then created an opening using a steel plate uh, to clad that door opening. I really enjoyed that. This uh, is an internal hallway and you can see I actually pinned it for the use of a full height sliding door at the end of this passage. When it's retracted, you wouldn't know the door is there. My only tweak would be that I wouldn't have three different types of timber all running in different directions for the grain. Uh, I find that visually a little bit uh, too busy for me, but I do like the cladding. I pinned this image above the kitchen because I really do like that slatted timber as a ceiling option. Uh, but again, like I said, the, the contrast between it and the floor cladding uh, is something that I would finesse. And then the way it goes from inside to outside, so it makes the house feel bigger than it actually is. And then this inbuilt concrete barbecue uh, is the reason that one made the board. I do like the design of this kitchen island bench. You'll see it in a couple of different images here where we've done this uh, steel uh, structural detail that extends beyond the cabinetry and is what is supporting uh, that bench top. And I also pinned uh, the lighting in that kitchen. I'm just trying to see if I did give it another image. It doesn't look like I did. Uh, just the, there's a really strong task light pendant light here and then these playful glass uh, pendants over the dining table. So again, running with that concept of great task lighting over an island bench where you need it and then you can do your playful and exciting over your dining room table. Uh, I really enjoyed this window shroud. So it's steel and it actually is the same level as the timber decking. So I thought that was a really nice detail. Uh, moving on, the moat corner uh, window system, I just enjoyed the cantilevered structure of this house. And again, as we touched on in yesterday's episode, just the, the style of lighting externally is really interesting. Uh, and then this is it from the back. So it's obviously on a sloping site. We can see here the introduction of the ground floor level and just the interplay of those two spaces. I really liked that. The first rum collection had just an exquisite shower detail. I believe we are looking at renderings here and here. I did like that car parking uh, solution in front of that gable, just the simplicity of that design and then their kitchen materials in this image and this image I felt were really nice. Uh, but for me, it was the use of the integrated appliances. So that's when your appliance is concealed behind your joinery. Uh, it is a more expensive option. You do have to buy a specialist um, appliances to achieve that look. So your fridges and your dishwashers are sold to be integrated. Uh, and they do look seamless. Um, so it is a stunning option if you have that kind of budget. Um, I also really enjoyed the El Fresco design in this image. The doorways and the fireplace in that image. The timber stair on this, the solid balustrade and then it changes material as we turn the corner. I found that really interesting. The island bench on that one. Again, we're seeing the huge... Um, Bench top being supported by a, 
a lightweight steel frame. I thought that was really nice. And then the use of the materials again on the front, just a really nice combination of simple materials that works really well. And again, here, the introduction of the pergola above that pool space. I just thought that was really nice and worthy of going on the board for inspiration. Uh, we are descending into autumn here in Geelong and it is getting cooler. So to cheer myself up, I did pin a pool today again with the beautiful um, pergola setting. I believe this project is in Janjuk, so not too far from where I am. And then the outdoor fireplace, which possibly is more appropriate in the weather that we're heading into. Uh, so some landscaping ideas did go up on the board again today. The JJ House made it for its great detailing. I did love the bench that's been introduced into this window opening. It's seamless plaster. There's no architrave. You can't even see a window frame. And then the introduction of this timber uh, seating or ledge was just exquisite. I thoroughly enjoyed this dining room table. That is why that made it and their centerpiece. And then this one single pendant light. The robe was really interesting. It's above the floor so you can obviously vacuum underneath that it's got that same uh, double rod feature as theirs so there's a tie through of detailing through this project and then the fact that the wardrobes don't go full height to the original ornate ceiling I'm really a fan of instead it's just running through to that uh, window height there of about 2.4. Some more integrated appliances in this project so again the fridge is concealed within the joinery and it's not until you open that you realize as is their dishwasher which is just that element there on that image and there it is there so you can see that the function is within that cabinet and that's how you drive the dishwasher but you wouldn't know that they had one when you're looking at it uh, when it's shut and then I really enjoyed this joinery again they've they've inserted contemporary into traditional and haven't actually interrupted the fabric of the existing property so I really liked that as a level of detailing and really liked that as a workbench obviously they could be an architect I do have that book myself uh, the gallery of the Bondi house I really enjoyed this is it this is its street facade that was the image that caught my eye the cantilevered concrete this little skirt detail and then the timber slat work this is what it looks like at night. So we've got timber slats obviously over solid and then over glass. This is what it looks like internally. It's just a really nice detail. I also really like this bed. Uh, I, the bed head, um, the bed itself and then the, the, the uh, nightstand. I just thought that was a really nice combination of materials. So that's why that one made the board. Here is its kitchen. So we are, we are again seeing the horizontal timber slats. And they've introduced track lighting up into that. Uh, so that's where the track itself is recessed into the timber slats. And then we have these down lights that are gimbaled and movable. So that was just a really nice uh, ceiling inside that property. And again, it's carrying through the idea of the screen internally. So it's referencing itself, which is always a really lovely uh, detail. And again, they've actually used it with a concrete floor, which to my eye, as opposed to this property, up the top is a little less uh, busy. Um, but again, that's just simple personal preference. There's no right or wrong in architecture. There's just personal preference, I find. Uh, the C and KC Design Studio or Residence C, again, the bath within the shower cubicle. So creating that real wet area, I find is a great use of a smaller space for a bathroom. You can put a bath in a shower, you don't need to do it externally. So I really liked that detail and that's why I pinned it. I like the suspended vanity on this. The materials are nice, the open and closed portion. But I think for me, it really was that mirror solution where we're hanging it, suspending it from the ceiling and it's not a square shape. I, I really enjoy that. I also pinned this particular piece of joinery. This is out of their walk-in robe. It has a built-in makeup table at it. And it also has joinery for your watches and your sunglasses built in. You can see it up there on that bench there. Um, and the little stool is there, is there for the makeup table. So, you know, that's taking your joinery to the next level. Again, you're going to need the budget to be able to do that. But it does offer you real organisation if you're after it. And the materials in this walk-in robe are really nice. So you've got the textured opaque glass door at the end and then as the backdrop 
between what one can assume is the ensuite and that makeup table. So those are the reasons those images made the board today. Uh, and then again, the detailing around this study, I found that really, really beautiful. The terrazzo top mixed in with the timber and then the, the heavier timber um, full height joinery behind that. And that's their kitchen. So they've used that same material palette sort of through their bathroom and their kitchen and their study area. So that was a really nice sort of kitchen design. Interesting ceiling, not just a flat ceiling. That's always, you know, makes a Pinterest board for me. I pinned this. I didn't do many stairs today. This was the only one. So this is a combination. We can see a staircase. It's got joinery and storage. So we can assume it's a very narrow property and they're maximizing their storage space. And then we're using skylights above and then glass floors just to trickle that light down through the levels. So that's why that one is on the board. The base scope house, again, great use of a pergola connecting a solid boundary wall in a courtyard scenario to the inside, creating this really great outside room. This amazing square featured cantilevered, here it is here, window. So that's really breaking up what is a relatively flat facade by protruding shapes, whether they be walls or U shapes above windows. You can actually see the window itself is back in that building line. And then they've just projected the roof and the ceiling out beyond to add some depth to that facade. I pinned this one for a skylight above a bed. I have done it before in a renovation of an existing property where I wanted to punch out to the side through the, use the existing window to create a door and then maximize our building footprint to boundary and that resulted in us having to use a skylight above, I believe that was bespoke renovation number two. Uh, and here it is here as a design solution. That's really nice if you're lying in bed to be able to look up and see sky. And with a lot of the Viewlux uh, skylights, you can in fact get a blind in that. So you don't need to worry um, about privacy or about blocking any unwanted light out. Now, this island bench was extraordinary. This was the image that I saw and it took me ages to realise that it was in fact a suspended black frame holding up this kitchen island bench because I thought how incredible is that to be able to just, you could store anything you want underneath it. I'm assuming that the gas line to that cooktop is somehow running uh, through one of these support columns and on the underside of the island bench, but it just amazing an amazing island bench so that's why that and that image are on the board this one here was the color palette more than anything I really liked the blue on this side of the kitchen tying in to the blue joinery on the other side again a very narrow space uh, but the tying of the materials across and then the the solid slab island bench in the middle is quite lovely this one is quite a vibrant and colorful kitchen and dining space and I actually pinned it because I quite enjoyed the use of lighting. Uh, the, this particular little apartment, it's, so it's like a little space built into a, a bigger space. I pinned that for the corner door. It is a detail I've used previously. I've used it on Bespoke House 4 and um, Bespoke Derbyshire House number 1 and Bespoke Renovation uh, number 5. I believe where it just increases the space and connectivity between the two rooms, but does allow you to close that space off completely. So it's a great little trick if you're running out of floor area for function. This one was pinned for the lighting above that dining room table and just the interesting combination of shapes and sizes there for pendant lights. I pinned this one for the materials in the kitchen. I don't often see, I have done matte black. I haven't done uh, black gloss before um, but I did like the detailing around the timber veneer uh, on this solid wall as well and just the way they created the shadow line in the black so I thought that was a really nice color combination and it, uh, black gloss as opposed to black matte is going to bounce the light around the space a lot better uh, and then finally the I pinned this one for the external material and I quite liked the pattern introduced here in the facade where the sheets of this clad, particular cladding of different sizes. This was its kitchen over here. Um, and I just liked the pattern in the, 
the cladding. So that's why that one made the board. So that was all the inspiring images from overnight that have gone up onto Bespoke uh, Architects Pinterest page if you wanted to take a further look. If you're also looking for some inspiration, why not check out Bespoke Derbyshire House number one. You will find the link at the bottom there and also in the description box for this video. It's a great little, very minimalist. It does have the corner door that we saw up here in this project. Uh, it also uses a lot of timber screens on the outside, very minimalist on the inside, has a wonderful feature light in that front entry. Well worth the three minute investment if you have the time. Thanks so much for joining me again today. I look forward to catching you again next time on Bespoke Architects Daily Pinup. Thanks. Bye.